Okay, we're just about ready to put HTML to bed. Um, basically, I want to do it. The reason I'm doing these HTML tutorials is a sort of prelude to PHP, and I want to do that as a sort of prelude to doing Drupal and Drupal development. Um, and we're, we're just sort of ready to, to get rid of HTML and put it to bed. One, one last thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about things like web standards and XML and XHTML. Essentially, the standard for HTML, it was obviously invented by Tim Berners-Lee, and Tim Berners-Lee now chairs something called the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C. And W3C, they are responsible for the standardization of HTML. And at the moment, it's on, I think, 4.01. Um, it's about to upgrade to HTML5. HTML5, I think it, it, it I'm right in saying it, it's 10 years on since the last update from HTML. HTML4 is sort of 10 years old. And HTML5 is going to be a, a quite a, an advanced upgrade on what HTML4 was. Um, so I, I'm not really going to get in. I'm not going to get into HTML5 at all. Um, it's because that's a little bit too more advanced and stuff. But what I do want to talk about is HTML and XML and XHTML. And if you go to the World Wide Web Consortium website, so if I type in W3C here, and we go in here, you can see lots of technical information about um, XML, HTML, XHTML. XML stands for extensible markup language um, and it's a markup language that's used to define lots of other markup languages probably the two markup languages that we're familiar with are HTML and RS if you're familiar with RSS feeds that's also a subset of XML now HTML as it is isn't actually compliant with XML there's something called XHTML which is extensible hypertext markup language which is a subset of XML um, which is compliant. It, it's XHTML, I'm probably not explaining this best, but XHTML it sounds like extensible hypertext markup language. It's virtually the same as hypertext markup language, except it's compliant with XML principles. Um, I'm not really going to get into the, the ins and outs and, and, and stuff of this, um, but just remember XML is used for creating other markup languages. X, XHTML is a markup language that's very similar to HTML, but it's it's compliant with the XML stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, just just to make you aware of of all the bits and pieces and and stuff that's going out there, and if you go onto the the W three C website, you can see lots of things about standards, um, lots of other XML technology. It explains quite a bit about XML and what XML looks like and how you can use it. XML it's it's used much more for data. It can be used for displaying information visually, but it can also be displayed for non visual information. It's 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 quite technical. It's it's not something I've I particularly want to get into. However, one thing I do want to get into is a validation. Now, if you want your code to be absolutely tip-top and validated by the World Wide Web Consortium, um, you need to include a, a, a special sort of header. And if I just go here and do view page source, you'll see how the, the W3C um, website itself has got this, this special header here, which has got a, quite a lot of technical information. And if you see up here, it's got XHTML 1.0. You can see down here, it, it looks pretty much like HTML. It's virtually the same thing, but it's it's XHTML. And what we're going to do now is just go back to the beginning and create that simple HTML document, except we're going to put this at the top, and we're going to make it valid H XHTML, and we're going to make it um, compliant with, with the standards, and I'll show you how to validate it now. So we just copied that there. Now we're going to paste it into our document here. Um, and we're just going to do the same sort of thing. We've d that's that's edge. you can see all you can see all the XML stuff in here. You can see all the. I mean, this is all technical things to do with XML and, and official standards. And this is what turns the HTML into XHTML and makes it all valid and compliant. But we've got that there. Now we're just going to type in head title. Uh, we're we're going to call it XHTML. Could call it anything. No, we'll just call it. We'll just call it plain title plain title just to show that it can be anything um, then we got a head to go close off our head got a body um, h1 hello world this is xhtml um, we can type in anything here I'm just typing this for demonstration purposes except we want to do h1 and then we'll just put in a p this is just demonstration showing you that um, this is a valid XHTML XHTML document. Close that off there. Close off body. Close off HTML. 
So you can see this is going to be our valid XHTML document. Um, it looks pretty much, it, it, all this part here is exactly the same as HTML. It's just got the extra scrambled egg and stuff here. And we're just going to save it. File, save as, save as, as the normal thing on our, our drive. Um, libraries, documents, basic HTML. And we're going to call it hello new world or something. You can call it whatever you want. Um, but I'm going to save it there. HTML extension. That all looks quite good. Um, then we'll just go back to Firefox. Uh, go back up here. Actually, no, we won't go up to Firefox. We'll just go straight in here. Go to Documents. Go to Basic HTML. Go back to Hello, what was it? Hello World. Hello New World. Hello World. This is XHTML. Um, so there we go. You can see this is valid XHTML and everything. Now, one of the things you've got that shows that it's valid XHTML is you can copy that there. And then the World Wide Web, the W3C, so the W3C has actually got a validator. So we'll type in validator here. Um, you've got the markup validation service. You've got a number of options here. You can either upload a file, you can um, put in the address, or you can do it by direct input. We're going to do it by direct input because that's the easiest thing. So I'm just going to paste that in there. Go check there. And this should work, fingers crossed. If it takes forever, um, this, this is just to show you for demonstration purposes. Uh, if you took all the all the web pages that I've done so far and you put them all in here, they probably wouldn't be particularly valid because there are probably one or two little bits here and there that this validation service probably wouldn't like. But the, the, I mean, the thing is, most most web browsers out there are quite forgiving. Um, but this validation service just makes sure that everything is tip top, and for some reason, it's not working. Um, let me just reload. Check again. There we go. Document was successfully checked. It says HTML one strict. Um, there are a few different versions of XHTML. Um, I think actually XHTML is on one point one of them. It, all these versions are updating. I mean, this is why I didn't really want to get into it because um, it gets a little bit anal and a little bit annoying when things go on. But if we, I mean, W three C, W three C HTML standards. This should take us to. I mean, this defines the actual standards itself and tells you all the bits. But just, just be aware for now that there's this thing out there called XML, XHTML. They're all sort of technical, funny things. They're, they're, but XHTML is virtually the same as HTML, and they're sort of subsets that have been created by XML. And XML is also used to create other languages such as RSS feeds and and various other technical languages that are out there. And j just be aware of all these different things. Well, I, d I don't want to get bogged down in this now because it's quite a technical stuff, and it it's, it would take us off a, a different direction. Um, but that's that's pretty much what I want to say about HTML and XHTML and XML. Um, and now we're going to be looking forward to doing some PHP.